May 7th, 2024, round and round with this electroculture stuff. Look, I got my I got my three antennas here. Tallest north side, then steps down to my second tallest with a little bit bigger winding, and then down to this third one. Got a ground wire, just a piece of copper wire, and then it's stuck straight down into the ground a couple feet there. And then over here on this most northerly antenna or structure, there's a wire running down into the ground on the bottom of this piece of bamboo wood and or grass technically. And then there's a coil under that log over there which runs up to the copper wire over there. The copper wire runs over here and there's another coil under here in this aluminum tray. Well, that's all well and good, but here's the thing. This is what I started with over here, an aluminum pan with water in it and the plants sitting in there. All right, now, the, the effectiveness, the electroculture, um, it's an area and it lays in the magnetic field and the ionosphere that interacts with the antennas I'm just kind of giving a general layover of all this and I'm gonna put a bunch of words out there and oh, sorry for all the noise in the background um, so the magnetic ley lines go from or magnetic energy travels north to south the uh, the ions or the uh, photons or whatever that's coming into the antennas come in there's a ground and then there's like the middle layer that's the magic sweet spot that you've created with all this so there's like this energy field or disruption to or um, drawing in of whatever it is the magnetic um, uh, energies and as long as it's copper or aluminum, not iron, not metal, which I do have some metal in here, but it will cover that later. That creates my Faraday cage and concentrates the energy even more. But just having an aluminum tray here, aluminum, again, you can make your, your antenna out of aluminum, aluminum wire, and there's some pretty sophisticated, very scientific, uh, designed, engineered, antennas out there but here's the thing uh if and they're, they're very it doesn't really you don't really have to have an engineered one you just throw some metal coils up there or, or run a line around your property and you've created this again zone bubble where all this non-ferrous metal is that creates this ionic bubble uh magnetic uh zone whatever so back to the uh, aluminum tray it's in a northerly pretty much position i think i have to check that but they run pretty much north to south isn't that a mag or the uh, antenna all by itself even though it's not grounded it's got ground under it it's insulated with the blocks it's got water in it all the bags are connected they're facing up and their aluminum is facing up so i think technically i was doing electroculture without even knowing it and now I've just kind of added a bunch of copper wire to it. And I got this really cool. My buddy gave me this. Check this out. Copper. Copper. That's probably like 10 bucks worth of copper right there. But it's got these really cool fittings on here. See how this one spins? And then this one. Whoops. Sorry. This one also. They both spin on there. So when you plug this into the water, which is supposed to be not JB welded on there, but connect it into a proper fitting this thing will spin around in opposite directions with a little bird in the middle isn't that cool and that's copper so i i kind of put that up over here on the edge of the and that's touching the metal so and again i got this uh hardware cloth and whoops that fell down got this hardware cloth in there which is uh you know galvanized steel so it would potentially create a well a battery ionic battery i got my copper core i got the charcoal down there in the bags which are under the coil which is grounded so yeah i've essentially created an ionic battery here with uh this 
uh, Faraday cage on the end. There's a little one down there, a big one down here. This is the north end of the field, of uh, north and south, the lines, the zone. I got it all going on here, folks. You should like and subscribe. And if I had a Patreon, you should probably come and give me a lot of money, too. Oh, and of course, the peppers are loving it. Look at these. I think these are Carolina Reapers. They're supposed to be chocolate, but they came out just right. Is that the color of Cher Carolina Reaper is supposed to be? I don't know. They're really huge, man. That thing's like bigger than a golf ball. Ooh, and I got a couple chocolate primo tallies ready here. Brent, uh, Brent eats heat. You, uh, you got to give me some contact information for you, a link or something. Uh, I can give you my phone number if you comment, and then I'll come uh, back and once you contact me, I can delete the comment. There, there's some chocolate prima tallies right there that are ready. I got a few on this plant. There's no way I can eat all these, but I'll mash them up and save them for a hot sauce. Look at these things are beautiful. Primo Tallies. Man, they are hot. Got one, two, three, four on there that are ready. I don't know. These are not huge. I got one that's not ready. Should be a couple more on there, but I don't know. I think these things are getting a little stressed. I think they're getting too much heat out here. It's been getting really hot lately. And um, I think it's scorching them a little bit. See, even the, see these ones, the Trinidad's, they're, these didn't do well at all in the pots, but... Um, they're getting kind of sunburned out here. Probably my best looking plant right now is this one. Chocolate Reaper. It's got tiny little tails on everything. Not everything, but pretty much most of them. Look at that one. Really, really outstanding. Look at there's two right next to each other right there. So this thing's got like probably a dozen or more little baby peppers already started on it oh look at that oh, wow look at a tail on that one. Oh, i haven't seen that yet check that one out that is so cool and right next to it another one with a little tail on it so yeah there's probably like a dozen little peppers on here and a lot of uh a lot of blossoms this one's really thick looking nice a lot of leaves on it not losing or dropping too much peppers all over one two three over there yeah, there's got to be a easy dozen on there this one didn't start as soon as the other oh there's a ripe one down there oh i might have to get that off of there let's pull that out of there yeah yeah we'll have that with salsa today so uh yeah and i got to get some seeds off of these chocolate reapers to, oops in order to uh to repropagate them oh and the other thing i've been i did some temperature readings here the other day of course the big mesh bags they stay the coolest they're about 80 degrees when everything else is uh getting hot peak of the day or just after uh the newest bags running really warm i think it's still kind of doing some aerobic composting in there or decomposition generating a little heat not quite getting as cool as it should uh, the other second uh, old or the oldest of the uh, bags that was loaded this one's running probably five to six degrees cooler than the other ones there's a nice chocolate one there this has got probably four or five chocolate prima uh probably uh, half a dozen peppers on that one and then I got these are my latest chocolate prima tallies that are uh probably with uh their the fifth there yeah just a little over a month old so yeah that's it i have a double double system here because i'm all aluminum aluminum all whoops they're all antenna and then i got these copper concentrators in the middle i got some uh cage uh, galvanized steel on the ends for like a, a insular uh Faraday cage, a, fair, a magnetic uh, uh, capture device, so that this zone is like premium right in there, but kind of getting cooked a little bit from the sun. 
Man, these guys are stuck in the houses next door making, they're out here at six o'clock in the morning running a generator or some crap. <sighs> it, oops, furnace will coming, incoming. So that's it. We got some peppers coming in. We got uh, all the little ones are doing great. Got uh, I'm gonna get a few more pans this week too. Put this putting this new one in over here. Gonna go a couple more. Gotta move a bunch of stuff over there because this gets earlier shade in the afternoon and cools off so that uh, uh, you know it doesn't cook quite as long as the ones that are over here in the full sun for you know an extra couple hours and sunburning the peppers actually see people don't understand florida sun the air stops moving for a few minutes like you'll get a breeze but see when you don't have a breeze it gets really hot really quick and what will happen is these dark colored peppers will actually get a sunburn on them that's a sunburned one right there here let's pull it off take a look at it we got plenty of sunburned peppers so i can just show you one so even with all the water and all the vegetation and leaves they have, this pepper facing upwards into the sun and the air stops for a few minutes and the temperature goes up and this pepper's you know, getting darker the riper it gets and it'll get burned. So that's a little burnt spot right there, that white spot that's completely dead. And that'll, in a few more days, that'll dry out. It's already starting to dry out right there. And that'll um, make a rotten spot in your pepper. So this this pepper's already doomed i need to get some of this screen mesh vinyl mesh more mesh and get it up over the plants to shade them during that really hot part so in the morning they get the sun in from the angle the ions are coming down from the antennas making the zone and the sun's coming in here baking everything at about 150 degrees so I think that covers everything, including the sunburnt stuff, which I'm starting to get. So yeah, I need to, if I could string that piece up between this bamboo over here and hang it with some cords or I could put some more poles in to hold it all up. But uh, yeah, that's gonna be the next project, I think. I don't know, we'll see you later, bye, cut.